love them or hate them, we're reviewing my very first Emerson folder today. Well, yep, that's right, folks. We have here in the collection, having seen probably one of the longest stints of regular use in recent memory for me, the Emerson CQC-7 AW, I believe is this particular model number. They have lots of different models. Uh, this one is one of the more EDC friendly of their line versus like more tactical. And that's why I decided to go with it. This is the V grind version. They do have lots of different types and styles. Uh, and some of them have different number annotations next to them. But that's why I went with this. I was like, it's still got the Emerson feel strength tactical capability, um, but also has more of an EDC friendly look and feel to its size and shape and overall design. Now I have totally put this through the ringer. You can see all that wear because this is my first Emerson and there's definitely a, a, a persona, a name recognition. When you drop the name Emerson, it's very um, connotative, I guess, relational to law enforcement, military, strength, capability, tactical feel, all those things kind of come to mind. And when you drop that name, I mean, particularly in professions where knife is a key piece of kit, Emerson is, definitely has some good name recognition and, and good qualities and good connotation. Now, today I'm gonna put this up against a lot of other blades. We're gonna discuss it compared to the Kershaw Emerson line. Kershaw Emerson Auto, and lots of other blades to discuss really the value to what you're getting with an Emerson knife, and is it really worth purchasing, and, and why there is definitely either gonna be an absolute love for the knife, I feel, or an absolute kind of like hate <laughs> for an Emerson knife, a true Emerson. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that here throughout this video, so let's go ahead and break it down. All right, so phase one is the grinding. Now, a lot of Emerson knives are chisel grind, and I'm gonna tell you right out of the gate, I hate chisel grinds. Wouldn't buy a chisel grind knife, wouldn't be my first choice, wouldn't spend the money that Emerson's cost on any form of chisel grind. They're just irritating to me. Uh, I've used them before on a few fixed blades and pocket knives and have not been impressed with what they can do, and it's got a weird geometry, you know, one side being flat, one side coming in to give you that that edge just doesn't give me consistent cuts that I look for or prefer when I'm using my knives. So that's a non-starter. Thankfully, they also have what they call their V grinds. In this case is a saber grind. So there, there's a consistent on both sides, uh, second or sorry, first bevel, right? Coming halfway through the blade there. This blade is 154 CM USA made. It's gonna be 3.3 inches long. Actual cutting edge is about 3.1. Again, one of the reasons why I decided to go with this particular knife and its design. Classic drop point. The thing is though, even though it's a V grind, which is what I would prefer, the edge geometry and the secondary bevel edge is still a chiseled grind. So on one side here, you can see that black coating barely comes down, there's barely any space for the edge. And that's a very short, abrupt edge. And then on the other, you can see it's much higher. So it's coming in in this weird, not perfect peak like you would expect on a blade, but kind of like off kilter to one side. The idea being that that's easier to field sharpen. Guys, I have like 1200 videos up on YouTube and at least half of those are knife videos, knife reviews. Most of them having normal V grinds of some kind, hollow, saber, you know, um, full flat, whatever, with a secondary bevel that comes in at peak. And I've had to field sharpen with a simple work sharp field sharpening kit, ceramic rods sometimes, lots of knives out in the field, and I've never had an issue with the standard to a peak pyramid, you know, uh, um, edge bevel. So this weird goofiness, it, yes, it's, it comes sharp out of the box. I slice my finger open about a week into owning it. It is very sharp. It is easy to resharpen, but it's not any easier than a normal grind. So some of you, you're gonna think that that's really irritating and basically a non-starter. You'll be like, I hate that. Or you'll be like, dude, it works. It's functional. I love it. Or you might just fix it. I'm contemplating throwing it on my work sharp belt sharpener, my Ken Onion edition, and regrinding the entire blade into the proper bevel there for that secondary edged bevel. Just again to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Hopefully you can see that right there at the grind tip. It is off kilter on purpose. That's the way they've designed 
the grind. Goofy, weird, it's functional, but why? Next up is deployment, that wave feature. Iconic for Emerson knives, it is the most functional. You know, there's some other brands like Cold Steel that will do it, similar kind of style, and so there's other brands out there that, that try to mimic this uh, hook wave feature. Emerson does it the best. It just functions, it works fantastic. I love deploying the wave feature out of my pocket. I've owned a couple of those Kershaw Emersons for years prior to owning this one, and those have always been fun, and this is no different. It will absolutely catch that pocket um, corner, you pull, it whips out and deploys the blade immediately. Now the drawback to this is that depending on the cut of your pocket, sometimes it will deploy no matter what you do. So if you wanna pull the knife out and hand it to a friend, um, pull it out and then deploy it with the thumb disc that we'll look at here in just a moment, sometimes it just is a non-starter and it just deploys all the time. And sometimes it can get a little tricky if you got children running around, people close in proximity that you don't wanna accidentally nick, uh, or even clothing, longer clothes, jackets. There have been a few times where I've gone, whoa, and almost you know cut a hoodie wide open on the side and ruined my hoodie or whatever it is just because it's deploying when I don't want it to or I'm not expected when I'm trying to pull it out of the pocket. So that is a downer to the Wave. I'm willing to sacrifice that for how cool and fun the Wave feature is, but sometimes that's a non-starter. Now, a lot of Emerson's you can find that do have the Wave removed from the factory or you can degrind it, and, or sorry, remove it, de-wave it if you wish. And with the wave discussion comes the disc. Uh, that is the other thing that they use is a disc there so that it, I find very easy to deploy, but you could, it's, it is a Phillips head screwdriver screw in there. It could back out, fall out, um, something like that. You could lose it if you weren't paying attention down the line if it ever backed out, backed itself out. Uh, and it is about a quarter inch over the cutting edge which means that sometimes with cardboard boxes or plastic that you might be going deep close to the handle, it can sometimes bind up and catch. Not very often, but it does happen every once in a while. For some of you, that will drive you crazy. For others, it's not a big deal. You have other thumb studs and lots of thumb studs are like this, you know, will block a little bit of the blade. It's just something that you find with most Embersons that's blocking a small portion of the blade if you were trying to slice very high close to the handle. Now, next up is the locking mechanism. Most Emersons, in fact, I believe all Emersons, are flow through construction with a titanium liner lock. So these are titanium liners that you're seeing here on either side, which does give it a, a feel of exoticness and strength that say even stainless steel sometimes won't offer to you. But if you've ever owned a titanium liner lock and titanium with steel, they don't, they're not good bedfellows. They fight and they kick each other and they you know, push each other out of the bed all the time. Uh, this liner lock, though strong, I have no wobble left, right, up, down. Super solid lock. And the way that it's, there we go, the way that it's cut in, it's very easy for me to disengage in that regard. But what ends up happening because it's titanium rubbing on the steel blade, right? Near the back there. Every time you disengage, you hear that crack, like a crunch? Every time. And it's, it's this is like after th whatever it is. I think I got it again in like February or March months of use that I finally wore it down to that level. When I first got it, it was even crunchier. It felt like there was a piece of sand in between the blade and the liner lock because there were little burrs and the titanium on steel just doesn't do well together uh, and, and is really kind of gnarly and that never really goes away. And you got to actually work it in for weeks before you get some of those initial grittiness feel out. And sometimes it would be like, I really had to push on it to disengage the liner lock. So that it, it just doesn't feel like quality. It's quality because it's of the materials, but it doesn't feel like it. And it's this weird every time you disengage the lock. So for a liner lock, it's titanium. It's very strong. It's very durable. Good lockup, but it is. it just feels weird. And some of you will absolutely hate it. And some of you will be like, it's titanium and it's super strong. I love it. Now the pocket clip is blacked out. It's got a medium ride, which is perfect. Not too high, not too low. Good lanyard hole there for 550 paracord. Uh, it's not ambidextrous. That's another thing that you either love or you hate, depending on if you're a righty, don't matter. They do make like hand specific. So usually they'll have sometimes a left-handed version that looks exactly the same. It's just cut out for lefties, but that's kind of a, a, a weird thing. I don't know why they don't just slightly tweak the, the design so that they, because of the wave and the disc, they could easily make it ambidextrous and just swap pocket clips, you know, have milled in parts on the other side. I don't know why they don't do that. So that's another aspect. You either have to purchase left-handed only 
or right-handed only Emerson's most of the time. Now with this particular model, the handle, it's gonna come in, uh, I believe the weight with the titanium and everything, it's like 4.1, no, it's 5.1 ounces. So it's a little bit on the beefy side and Emerson's are just that way. That's what, that's partly of what you're buying. You're not buying some light duty, elegant, slim, Delica 4 EDC blade. You're buying a burly, beefy, even with the more compact EDC friendly versions, heavy blades. Now this is good grit G10, feels fantastic in my hand. I wear large size gloves. The Wave acts as a really good ramp. And even though this doesn't have a deep cut in like some other blades out there in a lot of Emerson designs, I still feel very much in control, not only when I'm doing just regular utility cuts, but if I had to use it in a more self-defense roll, you could do that and I'd still have great traction over the knife. Now the deployment, I believe it has like stainless steel washers in here. I, when I, I had, I disassembled the entire knife once or twice. Uh, it, that is very easy to do. It just has flat heads and Phillip head drivers and screws all throughout. So you could use simple multi-tools to take it apart and put it back together. You don't have, have to have special torque, you know, screws like most other knives do. So that's a positive, again, easy field stripping for military law enforcement. I had to lube the heck out of this thing to get it to be as smooth as you are seeing here and still got a really good detent. I mean, I really got to work at it to whip it out like that and you can get it in finally, but uh, I really had to lube the heck out of it. It was super sticky when I first got it, and that's why I took it apart so that I could lube the washers inside. So now here's this, the, the other half of this, this, is the price, and I'm gonna get real with you guys here. I paid over on GP Knives is where I bought this months and months ago. This is before we even landed any sort of links with them. And I will have links over to GP Knives, Blade HQ, Amazon. We appreciate it when you guys use those hyperlinks, when you guys make purchases of any of the gear that you see here uh, or anything that you're purchasing. Uh, we just appreciate that. Uh, I paid $197 for this model over on GP Knives. And that's usually about the going rate. About $200 to even more is what you're usually gonna be paying for most Emerson pocket knives. Now the blade steel is 154 cm, which is a good steel. They do 57 to 59 Rockwell. Uh, I've seen good, easy edge um, uh, resharpening capability. I can easily put an edge back on it and it holds a good edge for 154 cm. This is by no means a super steel. There are lots of more exotic, higher end steels now. There's three CPM 3V steel, there's M390, there is a, even S30V will hold its edge longer and with a proper heat treat could be just as tough and durable or very close to what you're finding here. And they are starting to do some more different types of steels now, but this is still kind of their bread and butters, this 154 CM, which for everything that we're seeing here, even with the titanium liners, G10, the, the design of the knife really, it should be around like 120 bucks. That's really realistically to what else is on the market what you should expect for what you're getting. So it's got a huge markup in my opinion compared to whatever else is on the market. As a few examples, I have here a recently released Italian made G10 with M390 steel, uh, steel wheel Tazo, and this thing's gonna be about $170. So 20 bucks less than this knife with way higher end steel, has a proprietary locking mechanism that's very strong. Arguably, I would argue is probably even better suited than a liner lock, maybe a little more moving parts. So maybe in the sandbox or something, you know, it might not be as intuitive as just a simple liner lock to clean out and maintain, but way more contouring, way more attention to detail on this steel wheel. And it's still, you know, European high-end materials, high-end quality control with normal grinding, <laughs> normal grinding for 20 bucks less than what we're getting for this Emerson. And here I have a Hogue EX-03 uh, with a four inch CPM, or excuse me, 154 CM blade. So exact same steel. You can see much larger, broader. This has a plunge lock. Um, it's only, you know, right-handed only polymer handles but it has a safety because you, you can also get it as an auto. This thing's like 120, 130 bucks. Uh, and we're getting very similar materials to what we're getting here, minus the titanium basically on this Emerson. A really big competitor in my mind in size and weight class and all that would be say the Cold Steel um, Lawman, American Lawman. And this is, has CTS uh, XHP steel. I think I paid like $80 for it. Yes, it is Taiwanese made, but that is a US steel. G10 handles, triad locking mechanism, very similar in size, literally $100 less with better 
steel by far and it's ambidextrous and arguably a stronger locking mechanism than a liner lock. And as we transition to the final comparisons with the Kershaw Emerson lines, and I don't know if there's something going on that I see a lot of places out of stock. I don't know if their deal with Kershaw and Emerson has expired. I don't know if it's on hold. I don't know if they're changing it. I don't know what's going on, but I have the, I believe it's the launch four uh, Emerson auto. This is a USA made. CPM 154, so a better steel than the uh, 154 CM that's on the Emerson here. Uh, this is an auto knife, usually more expensive, uh, aluminum handle, all USA made, ambidextrous. This guy's like 120 bucks for this knife right here compared to this knife right here. And so finally, what about the Kershaw Emerson line in general? Now, these are taken from classic Emerson designs and then just brought down to budget-friendly prices. Instead of titanium, we have stainless steel. Instead of G10, we will usually have a polymer, a glass reinforced nylon that feels very similar to G10. And then we have like HCR 14 MOV steel, definitely a budget steel, but the lines are very Emerson-esque you're gonna get discs that are very similar. You get the wave feature that functions just as well, but you're gonna get natural grinds with natural edge geometry, and you're gonna get frame locks that are stainless steel that actually, in my mind, are a little more functional, a little stronger uh, than a liner lock would be, and you don't get that gritty every time. Now, this is gonna come on, on Teflon or nylon bushings, but what I have found, and I'm gonna show this to you, here is the um, budget-friendly $28 Kershaw Emerson. Boom. Flies open, buttery smooth on those Teflon bushings. These stainless steel ones, not going to fully engage. And this is after lube. I got to get a little bit of a wrist flick in there, and then I still have that grittiness, and then it's not as smooth down in there. So I'll be honest with you. I mean, I hope that these aren't discontinued. They may be. Uh, if they are, pick up the Emerson Kershaws as soon as you can. But in all honesty, aside from the quality of just a stronger quality bushing and the 154 st steel over the Chinese HCR, the Kershaw Emerson line tends to be a little more friendly to the pocketbook, but also friendly just in functionality. They seem to function slightly better. So guys, with all of that being said, I know that I basically have talked probably half of you, if you've never owned an Emerson, out of owning an Emerson. Uh, this won't be my last. I will buy another one. There's something just goofy and iconic and weird but functional about the design of Emerson knives that if you do have the money, you are there is something about them. I can't put my finger on it. I can't tell you it's this reason to consider owning one. Yeah, I'm not getting rid of this knife. I'm going to keep it. I will use it. It'll be like in my top couple knives when I'm thinking about super hard use, brutally tasked knives that I own in my pocket knife collection. So it's not going away. And I'm going to probably add a few more Emersons down the line as well that I'll obviously show you guys. But in all reality, for the price of almost $200, you can get a lot more knife uh, from a lot of great companies um, out there with better steel, better you know ergonomics oftentimes, better fit and finish, more normal natural grinds, ambidextrous. There's a lot. So you, the Emersons are definitely in my mind, you love them or you hate them. And uh, even though there's a lot of goofiness to them, I, I tend to love them. I do. <laughs> after owning this one and it won't be my last. So I hope this video has been entertaining, informative, showing you all the intricacies of an owning an Emerson and what you can expect, all the idiosyncrasies. Uh, you know, it's like owning some goofy Italian made car. Yeah, it looks super hot and sexy, but it's got all kinds of goofy problems with it. And it's not always super reliable, though I would say this is reliable, but you know what I'm saying? Like you love it, not because of necessarily all its functionality and the price, you love it because you love it. And so that's how I kind of feel with these Emersons and particularly this CQC-7 AW. So guys, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your feeling on Emersons, the Kershaw Emersons, uh, just topics in general. Love to hear you guys' feedback and comments below. I invite you to subscribe if you're not a current subscriber, become a part of the GT family. Uh, check out those other videos popping up. Check us out on the social media as well. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.